I want to ask you about the Lakers. Uh, they're obviously an absolute mess. I'm curious in your oh, opinion what direction. Not a mess. Did you say a mess? A little bit. I know, uh, you know, with the, the injuries and whatnot. I'm curious what direction you think they should go this offseason if they do miss out on the playoffs again. <sighs> Well, you know, it's it's really tough. You know, I am a Laker girl and Sparks girl through and through. <laughs> I bleed purple and gold. Um, it's tough for us when we are not winning and when we're not on top. Um, but it's going to take a little soul search, and we got to figure this out. Obviously, we know that LeBron is at the peak and still doing amazing. We just have to keep him, you know, healthy, of course. Um, AD is clearly not a five. He's a four, phenomenal four, who is very effective, but he needs some help on the inside. We can't rely on him to be our just our sole big man. We need somebody bigger than him inside who's willing to do the dirty work. So I think a big is really going to be important. And then, you know, the ones have been pretty good, um, a solid one. Obviously, we don't have like a Chris Paul on our team, so it's going to be important collectively for the point guards to to really help facilitate the ball, moving the ball around more. Um, and then defensively, the the Lakers are known when we are, you know, top five in defense and they're hanging their hats on defense, um, they have a better opportunity of winning and being in championship form. And uh, that's just not the case right now. So it, it's difficult right now for the Lakers. And then the last thing is the dismal three-point shooting. Um, oh, my gosh. It's like building brick houses out there. Um, <laughs> Uh, I think they settled too much for the three. Clearly, they're not a top three-point shooting team. And, you know, if I were coaching, I'd talk more about getting that ball and taking it to the basket, trying to get more to the free throw line, being aggressive and not settling so much for the three ball. I know you bleed purple and gold, but I need you to be <laughs> honest with me. Who do you think has a better chance of winning a title in L.A. sooner, the Clippers or the Lakers? Oh, man, send the dagger. Well, listen, the Clippers right now <laughs> – um, have the team to beat in terms of they, they have the three superstars that they need. They have great surrounding cast, um, solid at the point guard, solid with their backup. Um, post is really nice. Um, they, they definitely have all of the pieces and they have an excellent coach. Um, for them, it's just going to be a matter of showing up and playing well when they need it. And sometimes they don't play as well on the road um, in the playoffs. You know, historically, we've mm -hmm. seen that. And then, you know, Paul George has, I think he's the X factor. He's my guy, friend. I really appreciate him. But being able to step up in those big moments, we know that Kawhi can, can hit baskets, but sometimes Paul George misses in opportunities where we really need for him to be solid. So, again, I'm not a Clipper hater at all. I'm from L.A. I love the Lakers, but it would be great to see the Clippers win their first championship ever. Yeah. As it stands now, who are your favorites out of the East and the West? Maybe like your top two. Well, I'm definitely going to go with Giannis. I think as long as he's healthy, uh, his team and his his vigor, his heart, his fight, everything that he does, um, putting his team on his back, he is always going to be, uh, you know, one of the toughest teams for uh, Milwaukee coming out of the East. And then you can never, you know, rule out Boston. Boston just has that blue collar work ethic. They work hard and Tatum's been playing excellent. I probably would vote for him MVP if I had a vote. I think he's just been so consistent all year. So when you look at those two teams, those would probably be my picks coming out of the East. Well, on another note, uh, you've been synonymous with the WNBA since day one. What are you most excited about for the upcoming season? Like is the Liberty, the super team winning it all? Listen, first off, I'm excited that Brittany Griner will be back on the court. Um, I hope that she has a phenomenal season and just getting back to her old self and just being amazing. Um, I'm super excited about New York and Brianna Stewart being in New York, joining um, Inescu. That's going to be phenomenal. You also have um, John Quill Jones. Ooh, that's just like a nasty group. Like their posters should be everywhere in Times Square. But you can't rule out Vegas, the defending champs, and you've added Candace Parker there. Uh, listen. I'm just going to wait with my popcorn. Whenever New York and Vegas are playing, like, don't bother me. It's like, that's going to be an amazing matchup. Yeah. Well, Lisa, there's been a lot of chat, too, around equality among WNBA players and their NBA counterparts. I love your thoughts on where you think the league has improved and where there's still some room for improvement. Well, they're always improving. I think the league is just so conscious. I think the... 
the with having NECA as the president of the Players Association, they are moving that needle in the right direction, being supportive of these women. The women have the voice. They are being listened to. Um, so I couldn't be more proud of where the WNBA is and how the players are uh, collectively moving the needle, you know, whether it's on salary, whether it's on social justice or injustice, all of the things. I'm a proud mom sitting on the side like, yes, go ladies, you're doing an amazing job. You mentioned you were excited to see Brittany Grinder back. I know she signed the one-year extension with the Phoenix Mercury. Do you have a message for Brittany as she really gets, you know, back into playing and, and trying to get the get a hold of what she had? Yes, I love you, Brittany. We're so excited that you're home, and I would encourage you to just continue to put all your hard work, sweat, and tears into your season and just being the best that you can be. And we will. Look forward to cheering you on all the way, uh, you know, this season. And congratulations on just all the things that you're about to do off the court that will create more awareness and justice for others. Women's March Madness. I know it's coming up and we're seeing some new team shine. South Carolina is amazing. I went to IU, so I'm a Hoosier alum. Indiana women, they're killing it. So how nice. important is it for the growth of women's sports to have these kinds of dominant teams that we don't always see in the forefront with these big personalities? Uh, I think it's great. I've, I've enjoyed watching, obviously, South Carolina with Aaliyah Boston, who's been just on fire and it's like every season she's getting better and better so it's been great to watch how dawn staley's been able to have these women buy into her system and then come out and be like phenomenal and, and people don't understand the pressure of being undefeated and what it means because there's so many sometimes haters on the side waiting to see you fall so um shout out to south carolina and what they've been able to do just year after year after year and really taking down some giants to to get to that top spot. And then there's teams like LSU or Indiana where there's other personalities that are coming out, um, loving seeing these teams just continue to move the needle because it is about personality. It, it's a show. It's entertainment. We are part of entertainment in sports. And so I love that these ladies have their hair done and their nails and their lashes and they're out there makeup. balling but looking good <laughs> and makeup like, you know, Listen, before there was only like one or two of us out there like that. So um, <laughs> I appreciate that we have, you know, these women just coming into their own. And the other thing I want to say is I appreciate the support of the men, the, the, the NBA players and a lot of the college players and just men in other sports that really um, support us. You know, John Morant's sister balling in high school. Like this is such a, a great infusion of just young men growing up, recognizing game and recognizing these women and supporting them. We need that, we love that. Thank you to all the fellas and the men out there who have been so supportive of all of us. Last two questions for you. We appreciate your time again. Do you think Don Staley's past Gino and UConn is the program in women's college basketball? Well, you know, here's the thing. There's enough room for all of us at the top. I don't like to try to tear down one program for another. Dawn Staley is a giant. Um, she is a legend of our game, and she always has been since her days at Virginia. And not because she's one of my besties, but she really is a phenomenal leader. And what she's been able to do is what she did for me, even as a teammate, and that is to truly inspire and to motivate another human being to be the best that they can be. And that's really the key, you know, and Gino's been able to do that in his right. We can never take any of that away. He's, I played with a lot of players that he's coached that were phenomenal and excellent um, in their X's and O's and their ability to be able to adjust. And, and I appreciate and respect that their hard work and their tenacity. And he's done what he's done at his program for a reason. And they've been on top for a reason. That doesn't mean that there's not enough room and that Dawn Staley's program is any less or necessarily more. But I can say that as a black woman, her having that opportunity, that platform and being paid what she's paid, we are very proud of her. We applaud her. I'm happy that she's getting these top players that she deserves to have because she's a phenomenal coach. But more than that, she's just an amazing person. I, I spoke with her and uh, only once, uh, you know, and she said she's fully confident that she could be a head coach of an NBA team. And we saw how close Becky Hammond was. How yeah. close do you think we are for her being in that role? 
Um, Dawn Silly, I, I talk about it all the time, you know, as a head coach in the big three and coaching men, the, the biggest thing that we have to remember as a woman is just making sure we don't walk in in the locker room at the wrong time on our players. Aside from that, there is nothing different about the game of basketball. And you really want to talk about people jumping higher and moving faster. That has nothing to do with execution, strategy, IQ, um, the understanding of the game and its importance. It's almost like saying if you play the game of chess, you you like a woman couldn't play it as good as a man. Like it's it's a game of strategy and it has nothing to do with, you know, our gender. It, it's a game, <laughs> you know, and uh, when it comes to coaching, it's really the exact same thing. And the last example I'll give you is just like when you think about a professor, like you have male professors and female professors and your, your idea of a professor being a good professor is never based on their gender. It's just like, some teachers are hard. Some people are strong. Some teachers are, you know, amazing at what they do and how they explain their work. And you can appreciate a professor for how they teach, not necessarily their gender. And so that's really the, the biggest difference that we have to change the minds, I think, of society about that. Hey, sports fans, if you want to see more conversations with athletes and stars, check out these videos right here and be sure to subscribe for more from USA Today Sports.